everybody, and welcome to SA Rugby Magazine. I'm Kevin Ferguson. I've got Mark Johain. Mark, let's talk rugby, Super Rugby Unlocked. What can we take away from this weekend? Well, uh, let's lock it up, okay? <laughs> Don't put our father excuse me. Uh, the Bulls, uh, important win for them. Yeah. I was surprised at how, how well the Lions started and, and in that first 40. But again, I just thought the composure, the experience, more and I thought it was, again, very good. Kicked very important goals. Uh, 30-25, it sounds closer than it actually was. It was a losing bonus point kick at the end from Alton Yankees to bring it to within one score. But a good away win. Uh, they've been the form team. We spoke about this last week, the week before that. We gave Jake his dues in terms of what he's done and what he's, how he's fixed that team in terms of discipline, uh, in terms of team selections and obviously their conditioning. Mm -hmm. And what he did say after this game was what has pleased him the most about every match is that they finished very strong in the last 30, yeah. which is a credit to their conditioning. So yeah, uh, they won win away from from claiming the Super Rugby Unlocked, they have to beat the Pumas in a fortnight. They're on a bye this weekend. But the good thing for them is all the points that they've gathered now go into the Curry Cup format. And I mean, I don't know if you want to just explain that to people because it is rather confusing. What is Unlocked? What is Curry Cup? Unlocked is just the first six games in yeah. the tournament. And the Bulls, I think, are sitting on 19. So they just need a victory to, uh, to secure that. Um, the Curry Cup... The points carry f over, and there's another six games involving the seven teams that are currently in the structure, and uh, the team with the most points at the end of the cup comp competition win that. So simple enough. Um, I think. Uh, let's chat about how 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 the Bulls dismantled the, the Stormers. Is there is there any team that can catch? I don't see any other winner other than the Bulls in the Curry Cup this year. No, and I think they'll just get better and get stronger as 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 the season unfolds. Uh, you'd like to think over uh, the next two months that the Stormers have to get a bit stronger and a bit better as they get more condition. Some of their better players come back into the mix. The Sharks, yes, you know, they've really been disappointing post, uh, post uh, the, the, the reintroduction of rugby post COVID. I thought they were outstanding in the bigger Super Rugby tournament. Uh, they were top of the table when we went into lockdown. <laughs> I thought it would be probably the game of the weekend. It was the most awful game of the season. Uh, the they were Sharks against a couple players, huh? the Sharks against the Cheetahs. Just both teams had such good intent in the first ten minutes. Uh, they dropped passes again. Durban's humidity, uh, you know, weather conditions. But I expect a lot more of that game. I had the Cheetahs to shade them with six minutes to go. I thought, well, you're on your money here. It's going to be a three-pointer, yellow card, ten points. Uh, you know, Kerwin Bosch kicked his goal, so he did that well. But again, you look, Pumas have one good game in them. Greek was potentially have one good game in them. Sharks have been indifferent. Stormers have been pretty much nowhere. It's, Lions are a young team that's coming. They're not going to be there just yet, maybe not for another year and a half. So yeah, Jake's got it right. He's got a good side there, and they've played some bloody good rugger. And I really enjoy the fact that they didn't win that game against the Lions with brute force. They won it with some class from their backs. And, and Stedman Khan said in the midfield is really playing well. And they experienced a Mornay staying at 10 and obviously Dwayne Colossal. And then Jason Jenkins, it's been the big surprise for me, you know. I always thought he was one of those dirt tracker type of internationals. Uh, he's gone to Japan, he's come back, uh, he's now left to go back to Japan, but Jake has said he really wants him back on a permanent basis. So that's also good for our locking depth as well when it comes to a national level. And do you, how important is the Curry Cup to win as opposed to being, uh, as opposed for the top four sides to get preparation and be prepared for the move north? I think because this will be a one-off kind of competition. I think everyone wants to win it. There's nothing else to play for. Mm. There's no internationals. There's no uh, global super rugby or Southern Hemisphere super rugby. So I think they're going in there to win it, and that will be their preparation. You actually want to go into the 2021 pro rugby season saying you were the domestic champions of South Africa. So, uh, so yeah, and I, you know, we spoke about Free State be uh, Cheetahs having so much to play for. But we also said that Ruan Pino and Franz Stein were so vital to that team, yeah. and both of them injured at the moment, you know? And yeah. Stein a late withdrawal on Friday night, and Pino out for, I think, till the end of the year. So, yeah, and I think a side like the Bulls, the way Jake's put them together, they'll do so well in the North. Eh? They've got the pack to do well, and then enough good experience at 10, and just enough of those outside backs. So I'm really looking forward to us going to the North, and it not being the Kings playing or a, an overplayed cheater side that had to play 40 odd games in that first season. That it's it's the best of our players that are playing there and uh, playing against. You know, we've got 50 South African players playing in the Premiership at the moment. Mm. So 
you know, sail sharks up against the sharks. I don't know, be a South African game. There's about eight South Africans in that starting 15. So looking forward to pro rugby next year. We just got to get through those next these next two months. Looking forward to getting crowds back again and uh, in the new year and and playing some a lot of with teams with a lot of variety in that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to to the move north and. Um you know, I think the Bulls will compete very well. Stormers will as well if they ever get the administrative and ever, all the other issues uh, sorted out. The team I feel sorry for again is the, is the Cheetahs, but um, they, they're going to be a perpetual feeder system. I mean, I've heard stories that they may be playing in Russia and I mean... In the States, in the major, major league there. And what they will be, as you've always said, they are a feeder to the Sharks, to the Stormers, particularly those two teams. And uh, mainly the Sharks, historically, that's where they've gone, the players, and seem to settle comfortably there. But yeah, and it's, if, we, if we accept that that is their role, then the union needs to be compensated, the players need to be compensated well. And uh, we accept that they're, they're a region that develops great talent, that makes us strong, be it at the international level or at kind of pro level when it comes yeah, to regions. Absolutely. So no one's going to touch the Bulls this year in the Curry Cup? I think we both agree on that. Yeah, the, te- the cheetahs did the touching, which we also called that day. I think they were a bit spooked going into to Bloemfontein. That one's out the way now. They've still got their losing bonus point. I can't see anyone else beating them. Uh, not in Super Rugby unlocked. And if they if they do drop a game along the way, it could happen, but they'll still have enough points to win the Curry Cup. Uh, to me, they are the form team and on balance the best team as well in the competition. Thanks, Mark. There you have it, folks.